sit back, strap in, and get ready for After Hours with TC Rastani. This is Abigail Harwich, executive producer, welcoming you to the show. And now, TC Rastani! <laughs> Welcome to the After Hours of T.C. Rustani, the podcast. I'm T.C. Rustani. I'm the palatial podcast penthouse. And we got my esteemed panel of experts around the horn tonight. We got Quincy, the milkman Briscoe. What's going on, Quince? Uh, not that much. We're just having some fun there, Rob. We ain't having fun until you got to dial 911. Across the table, of course, uh, my mentor. Gee, uh, I thought we got... We were done with all this. I said nine one one. I yeah, didn't he, say three nine three. Oh, all right, all right, all right, oh, I, oh, all right. right. I was like, he just got triggered. I watched his eyes light up. I didn't say, you know, I'm getting a little four one one of who's on the show. All right, not three nine three. Calm down, All right, okay. Why? Right. What's in the mood say? Nine one one. It was just a phrase. We're not having fun until uh, you got to dial nine one one. It rhymes. Uh, all right, okay. All right, okay. We'll put you on hold over there for a second. My yeah. mentor, Ricky Bittman. What's going on, wow, Ricky? I'm telling you, we're having a hell of a time up here. I, as Quincy and I were doing some little Jesus Christ Superstar, the first act, we sang it together That's before, right. you, we before are you got the, here. We are in the Easter season here. And as soon as he arrived, uh, he shut us down immediately. I so. didn't shut you down. Well, I, I was laughing over there because it was wonderful, <laughs> but Quincy was going to have a coronary. Conspicuous by his absence tonight, South Boston Jeff, he's a little under the weather. Yeah. He had way, way too much St. Patrick's Day stuff two weeks Still? ago. Still? Well, you know, those balloons that he had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's not going to be joining us tonight. But. but he's watching some fantastic movie that only you have heard of. What is it? I don't know, but I'm, oh, I'm, I'm probably, just assuming. It's probably a John Waters. I hope it's not that um, that movie where the people eat crap. But we have, I was born and raised <laughs> for a little part of my life in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have one of New Jersey's favorite sons joining us on Discord and one of our biggest fans, the one and the only Doug Palumbo. How you doing, everybody? What's going on, Doug? Nothing. I would like to make it clear, though, that I live in New Jersey, not that I have anything against it. I'm not from New Jersey. I was born in Brooklyn, but I grew up in Colorado. Nice. All right. Well, you, how is Mork? So, uh, he's very nice. Very well, well, you know, not not so nice now, but he used to be. Okay. You know, yeah. once, he got, once he hooked up with Mindy, he just changed. See, James, Doug's a, Doug's a real person. pro. Doug is a pro. He, because he picked right up on the Colorado thing. I'm going, where the hell is the Mork reference coming? It took me a little. It took me a little bit. Because he's, yeah, he's from Brooklyn. I got a lot of friends over in Brooklyn. My good friend Vinnie Capelli's from Brooklyn. And, and that's where the, uh, Ralph and uh, Ed Norton, Ralph, Ralph Cram and Ed Norton are from. And that's where the Warriors were from. 328, Cha 328 Chauncey Street. Oh, they, they, they were from Coney Island. Oh, the yes, Warriors. The Warriors. Right. But, Doug, it's an unbelievable pleasure having you on the program. You and I have talked many, many times on Twitter spaces. Remember when those things were popular? I do, and I used to really enjoy those conversations, but I just couldn't take the Twitter, the X. I, I couldn't take it anymore, so I had to yeah. get off. He's Twitter. gone from Twitter. Oh, well, that's a shame. I am. And it was, uh, and it, but we also were talking like at 3 or 4 in the morning, too. <laughs> that is true. But you were a trooper there. But you are a huge fan of the After Hours Rastani production crew. I, you know, I really am, and I can't even... Uh, I can't put my finger on exactly when it started, but it must have been, it must have been Bitman. And yeah. um, it had to somehow, been. somehow, some way that's, that's how I kind of got into it and then got involved with after hours and the YouTube channel and just watching them and just fell down the rabbit hole. And ever uh, since then, unbelievable. You, you, been better. you even made reference to Bull Montana before we hit the record. He, he did. I'm telling you, he's, he's the real deal. And now I heard through the grapevine and I, I, I mm -hmm. haven't seen any actual proof of this, but mm -hmm. you actually asked for a after hours with TC Rustani t-shirt about a year and a half one. to two years ago. And I heard yes. from Bittman that you actually put that on the Frank Sinatra statue in Hoboken, New Jersey. Well, I, I will do that. I did put his, um, the Bittman sticker on the statue. Right. The uh, the uh, T-shirt, I did not get a picture yeah, of. So I have to go back and all do right. it again. Well, old Blue Eyes and all his crew are gone, so we don't have anything to well, worry we about. Hoped, I said, I don't want Doug to wind up at the bottom of the river. For yeah, this. he's all... He, nah, well, all happen. right. You're trying to think... My what's his name? Isn't he, that his son? It has to be his son. Rowan Farron, Farrell. Oh, there's no question. Whatever his name is, the he, he's no the spin. Now, wait a minute. Now, now, Doug, now Doug pointed out something really interesting. On uh, we, we talked last episode about the, the gangster you couldn't name. Doug, who was he talking about? Joe Gallo. That's who you were, Joe trying, Gallo. To, you were trying to remember his name. You were telling some it was, story. It was his birthday, um, and I forget. It was late in, the, late in the night, early in the morning. 
and he uh, it was there was a hit on him in Umberto's clam house. And to protect his family, he ran outside after he had been shot and got shot a few more times, and then he died in the street. Wow. What a trooper. Oh, that's when we were talking about uh, Paul Castellano dying yes, at, you were talking about yes. at, at, at Spock you always Steakhouse. used to walk by there. Yes. Yeah. I never walked by where this dude got blown no, away. No, no. But, but this, this is why Doug... Because he, he's he, from he, Brooklyn. He and knows. he knows all the stuff we know. And we only got him for a short window. I want to tell everybody. Well, well this is just a preview. We're yeah. going to have Doug on the program probably in the next couple episodes for an extended period of conversation. So take some notes, Doug, about things you want to talk about. Now, what, well, I already have things I want to talk about. <laughs> for sure. well, well, give us a preview right now. The, the, the listening fans want to know. Oh, I, I, you know, I think one of the first videos I ever watched uh, for the After Hour show on YouTube was the one with um, um, uh, Pat Morita. Oh, that was our and, first uh, episode. Sherman Hemsley. Yeah. Yes. That's just, a- that, that hooked me. I, I got it. It just, it resonated. And I'm like, this is something I want to know more about. And then I just fell into the, into the uh, rabbit hole and watched, I don't know how many in a row. That was well, the well, first episode that I watched. It well, was great. And you started at the beginning because yeah. that was the first that, episode. That was the first episode. I was still living in Pahrump at that time. May 29th, <laughs> 2003. Yeah. It was the very first episode. Wow, I was still out west. You were out west. And I called you and I said, I'm going to have him Pat Marino. And, and you, I and didn't you, believe it. And you were telling me about some stories that happened at the damn napkin with him. Yeah, that's why I didn't believe it. I said, there's no way. They don't have enough uh, janitorial st- staff at the uh, Rastani Studios to clean up after it. Or wine. Yeah, oh, well, that's right. Yeah, he wanted the wine. Wine, women, and marijuana, right? That's exactly <laughs> what. No, and, and so did, uh, what's his name? George Jefferson yeah. wanted the weed. And he, he thought Bull was high. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how he thought that. Uh, and for some weird reason, Bull knows everybody in the universe, and they had a mutual friend that was a boxer. Dear God. And they, they became fast, lifelong friends, and then uh, he died a couple years later. <laughs> <laughs> he did, that's right. Bull has outlived everybody. Yeah. And will outlive everybody. Yeah, I think so. So, Doug, you have to get, you're going to have to make a trip up here, or maybe we'll make a trip down in New Jersey, because like me and South Boston Jeff go down there quite a bit for the Comic-Cons and whatnot. Yeah, Parsippany. And, you know, uh, I've never been to, um, I've never been to the Chiller Theater, which I think you're coming to here soon, right? And the end of April, yes. Yeah. So, and I was actually, my wife and I were up in um, Boston in September. So. And you, and you didn't, didn't call? Have, we, didn't have okay. any, we didn't have any extra time. That was the weekend I cut my hand. I oh, remember. the fingertip. Yeah. So it looked like a bone. <laughs> yeah. And then I wound up in the emergency room a week, uh, the, the, what, four days later. And where, where in Boston did you see? What did you, what did you fancy up here? Well, we, we like history. So we did some of the, the touristy stuff. We. We walked the, um, the the trail, the Freedom Trail. We uh, went to the um, Old Ironsides, of course. Right. We went to a couple museums. Um, we went to Cheers, which I've been to Boston before in the past, but just drove past it, never went in. And I have to say, the the real Cheers downstairs, the Bull and Finch, is a pretty cool little pub. Yeah. But it's a and, disappointment when you walk in and you think it's going to look like the TV show. Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't think it, I, I knew that it didn't. So I wasn't disappointed. What I was disappointed by was the fact that it closed at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Well, and we were having a great time yeah. uh, and uh, great, great, uh, bartender waitress. And we were just having a great time. And then, okay, last call. Well, I'm like, it's only 10 o'clock. Well, well you, then, can, you can blame no. Mayor Wu for exactly. that. Exactly. Well, the next time you come up, Dooley stays, Mr. Dooley stays open until 2 a.m. Yes. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> Unbelievable. So hopefully, Doug, you'll come up here and we'll give you the grandiose Rastani tour yeah. of, of, of Boston. The real Boston. I would just love to see the uh, Palatial Podcast uh, penthouse. Well, well if, you know, if we, I just posted a photo, but you're no longer on uh, Twitter. Are you on Instagram by any chance? No, I only, I only have um, uh, Facebook. And that's mostly, not mostly, but... The reason is because uh, I was in the Navy, so I have a lot of Navy friends that I still converse with, and uh, that's how we do it. So I, that's the reason why I kept Facebook, and then you know all my family and some of my other friends are on it. And that's you why know, you need to get back on Facebook, TC. So. I've been thinking about it. You, know. you should because all Doug's Navy friends could get involved. All right, there you go, and then you know Quincy can sing in the Navy like like the Village People. <laughs> they want you. They want you. No, no. They want you as a new recruit. No, he doesn't have to. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. We don't want to hear that. No, now, you, now, Quincy, Appreciate this is your it, first though. time talking to Doug. He's a humongous fan of yours, loves milk. For real. What Absolutely. do you got to say to Doug, Quint? Well, first of all, I salute you because you're in the Navy. Um, 
They want you. They want you. They want you as a new recruit. Uh, second, I wish you and your family and everyone happy Easter. How's that Thank for opening this? How's that? Are you going to have an Easter egg hunt over your house, Quince? I don't know if we're going to have an Easter egg hunt, but um, we're certainly going to have a lovely dinner. Um, I heard ham. Oh, yeah. Got to have ham. I heard about this. You know, what was the side that you wanted to have with your ham? I'm playing guessing games. I had some fun. Um, tater tots. <laughs> tater tots. Ham and tater tots. Tater tots. Huh? Yeah. What is wrong with that guy? There's nothing wrong with it. Quincy, only a ham and egger would eat ham and, <laughs> ham and tater tots. Now, Quincy, I, I, I have a question, if you don't mind. I know you like milk, but the more important question is, um, what do you like to dunk in your milk? What's your favorite cookie? Chocolate chip. Um, and then um, Oreo is like my second favorite. Um, or flavor it, now, as what, I would love to say. Now, if you have an Oreo cookie or a sandwich cookie, do you put the fork in the filling and then dunk it that way to make it easier or do you use your fingers? Well, first of all, I don't think you can put a fork into a cookie, can you? Sure you can. Sure. In the middle. What if kind it's like of an cook- Oreo cookie. If it's like an Oreo, you put the fork into the cream. Yeah. Oh, all right, okay. And you use to dunk it, and then you can just eat it so you don't get your fingers all messy. Well... Have some fun and uh, like a little kid. And if you really love Duncan, don't be bashful. Um, first of all, the <laughs> glass of milk has to be dipped to the top. But yeah, if the glass of milk is halfway, yeah, then I agree with you. You gotta get a long fork, uh, just like they're doing salad or fondue. You need a fondue fork. Fondue. Don't, don't, don't they have what they call fondue forks? I haven't heard that <laughs> word fondue in decades. Well, uh, uh. and then I uh, get if the glass of milk is halfway full. Then it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, take a fondue fork uh, and put it into the cookie and dip it into the glass of milk and then take it out and eat the cookie. Um, so what you're saying, Quince, is you like food you can use your hands with. Sure, yeah. So, um, so you must love gravy. No, oh, believe it or not, mashed, like um, mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes. Um, uh, with um, salt and um, margarine and uh, peas are good. And uh, baked potatoes, margarine are good. You eat, you eat that with a fork. Um, now, now for the peas, do you, do you scoop them all in, in one hand or do you eat them one at a time? No, you, you take um, a plateful of mashed potatoes and peas, you mix them in, a little salt, margarine. That's oh, real you tasty. Your hands. No, no, you, you oh, can't. Okay. Why, oh, um, yes, you do. I've seen you eat everything with your hands. Well, if we're alone, that's one thing. But if you're with a oh, crowd, right. yeah, then what you have. To, what are you talking about? I've got, it's what, romantic. No, no, I've seen you like, eat beef flavored rice at the green tea with your hands. Maybe just a tiny bit, you know, if we're alone, but... <laughs> if you're alone, you know, one thing leads to another. Yeah, you there know, you go. Yeah. yeah, you and Bull, I've seen you eat alone before, and that's, that's I've seen dinosaurs have more table manners. I want to know why a guy who drinks two gallons of milk a week <sighs> eats margarine, for Christ's sakes. What, what, what are you, trying to save calories? Come on, you got to have margarine. You well, need it on toast. With, what the hell's wrong with butter, for Christ's sakes? Margarine doesn't Butter's even... better for you than margarine. First of all... Yeah, it is. First of all, the margarine... Um, is the accent that, but it, the most important thing about margarine, you could wake up in the morning, it's soft, <laughs> and then um, you could slap it on your toast. Bagels, English muffins. No, no, let's get down to the real brass tacks here. <laughs> because margarine is cheaper than butter, right? <laughs> you and Pac A, right? Well, uh, that and it's and it's soft. Yeah. You know, um, the thing of this about butter, right? Uh, if you take a stick of butter, then you have to put it in the microwave. Well, you got some place to go for Christ's sakes. I mean, just you know, why don't you? Out. Why don't you leave the butter on the on the counter? I leave ours on the counter. We have a like a butter crock that you yeah. just leave it on the right. counter. Right, little butter mm. dish. Stay soft. Yeah, safe soft. Yeah. Well, that uh, okay, that. If, will the butter uh, go lousy if you leave it out overnight? No. 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 Or, or you can actually buy the whipped butter that they have in a container, and you can just leave that on the counter Spreadable all the time. Spreadable butter. It's out there now. Oh, they call that... Um, uh, <laughs> the devil's cheese. They call it no. whi- They call it whipped butter. <laughs> well, no, there was another brand of butter. Um, what, Pake? Blue Bonnet. You look blue like Bonnet, a, yeah. Hey, everything's better Everything with Blue better Bonnet. Everything's better with Blue Bonnet on it. Well, that, that's pretty soft. What about, what about Land O'Lakes? If the butter has to be good, make it Land O'Lakes. Something to the effect that song goes, right? Oh, you know, it's, yeah. It's just, <laughs> the, the attraction is the spread has to be soft. Right, because... Um, what about Vaseline? What, Why don't you just put that on your toast? No, you put that on, on your feet. You know, and, um, on your feet? <laughs> Vaseline? No. Yeah, you don't See put that on food. See how you learn so much by a simple suggestion. Well, no, what, what do you put Vaseline on your feet for? So because kicks, dry skin. You, you know, go uh, and kick some ass. Are you doing something that Ron Jeremy would have done in a movie? <laughs> 
if you want to take care of your skin, you do uh, just plain old good Vaseline, you know. Um, okay. Yeah, you because know, you have to take what's, care of your skin. What's wrong with a good old... <laughs> yeah, a little spit shine. Hawk a loogie on your foot. You need Vaseline. Yeah, well, <laughs> Back to the Vaseline, I guess. That's what I do because um, your skin gets dry. Did you have a lot of chafing problems as a child, Quint? No. no. He does have a very clear skin. He does. You know, he does. Other than that big wart on the side of his forehead oh. right there. Well, I got rid of that a couple of times. How did you, how'd you get rid of it? It's simply like uh, take a needle, take uh, put a uh, match oh, to it, Jesus. and then like uh, oh, God. and then you pop it open, and then uh, oh, drain it, oh. put the uh, peroxide on it, you know, and then okay, and right. then it heals itself up. Who needs a dermatologist when you got Quincy yeah, Bristow around? True. You have anything, anything final to say to Doug? He's going to yeah, come back and watch his TV cool. show. Well, um, whatever cartoons you like and <laughs> other TV shows and movies you like, I hope that you and your family get a couple of huge gallons of milk, cookies, chips, whatever. And I uh, like peanut butter cookies. Mm. Gotta have peanut Those butter cookies. Favorite. Here you Those go. Are my favorite. They are. Well, um, I hope that I you have and- it on good authority. I have it on good authority that Santa's favorite cookies are peanut butter as well. So I'm in good company. He would know. Well, uh, if that's what you love, that's what you're going to go and pick up. Pick I, up a couple I, of... I used to like the peanut butter wafer cookies that came in the brick. Remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. The, the sunbeam or whatever they were. Mm-hmm. Those were outstanding. Oh, yeah. Those are good. Yeah, yeah. Right. Be, wafer cookies. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that, you, there's a thing about... The, it, it, was, the, it was like having communion with peanut butter. You mm. could have the peanut butter ones. You could have the sugar ones. You could have the chocolate ones you know, with the cream. Well, you used to work at a supermarket, so you know these things. I uh, eat these things a long way before I grew up with these cookies. Before Uh, before you were stacking them, you were were snacking them. Yeah. um, Yeah. If you want, we can have a little bit of a cookie thing. uh, Maybe we'll see that for the next episode when Doug's on. All right. Okay. We'll do that then. All right. Um, Anyway, seriously, have a good Easter to your whole family. Uh, We enjoyed having you on our show. Mm. Um, Anything else you'd like to add for us? Or is that the... No, I'm good. I uh, just it's a real pleasure, and uh, you guys are really doing a great job, especially you, Quince. Well, thank you. Let's give Quincy a round of applause, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. There we go. To all of you, again, have a real good Easter. We thank you for having our show. Okay, Come again the, soon. We're not wrapping the show. We're just wrapping I, Doug up. Yeah, I know we're Doug because he has to go home. Doug has to go back to his family now. Hey, and, listen, um, I want everyone to remember. You know, when it comes to Doug, I found him. He did. He's my friend. He did. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I can't get anyone jealous. Uh, so, uh, Bitman discovered Captain America. That's, that's right. He was the fan mm-hmm. of the jukebox first. That, that's right. And so, I said, "Where do you see the rest of the ma- maniacs?" So I bet not that. Uh, I can't do it anymore. I can't uh, get anyone jealous, particularly Ricky Bittman. <laughs> and, and of course, Doug, we'll have to get you Bull's new address so you can send him a card or a letter. Jesus, he would love I, that. I would absolutely do that in two seconds. Well, you know, I haven't gotten the address yet because Bull hasn't called me back with the address yet. So uh, we'll have to get that. That'll be probably coming down the pike sometime soon because last time I told DZ. I really need cards and letters up here. You know? uh-huh. I was like, okay, you, you, you want money in them? Be nice. But, you know, well, just kidding. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, it's been an unbelievable pleasure, Doug. And we're going to have you on for a full episode soon. And we'll, we'll you and Bittman can coordinate what topics we're going to talk about. Okay, sounds good. I already have a couple in mind. Yeah, Un- keep, keep those notes handy. Unbelievable. Let's hear it up for Doug Palombo, Thank ladies you, Doug. and gentlemen. Thank you, buddy. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a big time commercial break and we will be right back after this. Do you love seafood? Hi, I'm Captain Dave Marciano, and I want to invite you to check out our new website, AngelicaSeafoods.com. Now you can get fresh local seafood shipped overnight from Gloucester's fishing families to yours. AngelicaSeafoods.com, the finest, freshest seafood New England has to offer. From the boat to your door, get Angelica Seafoods Premium Seafood, sustainably caught and packaged at AngelicaSeafoods.com. All righty, welcome back from that big time commercial break. This is the After Hours with T.C. Rustani, the podcast. Awesome talking to one of our big fans out there, Doug Palumbo from New Jersey, Brooklyn born, but New Jersey yep. living and Colorado raised. I wish, you know, I wish I thought back to how long Doug and I have known each other because I knew him before I started doing the, ju- uh, the jukebox. Okay. I got to be friends with him because we, I think one of us accidentally friended the other on Facebook. We were both members of a Pabst Blue Ribbon beer fan page. Okay. And that's how we became friends. 
There you go. And we just started. And then I realized what we had in common. I mean, really, it's like we were, you know, just cut from the same cloth. Huh? Brothers from everything. different mothers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, music and everything. And he's, he, and, and the other thing about uh, Doug, I'll have to remember to bring this up. He's very well versed in, in westerns. That's his favorite genre. Of really? Film. Westerns? And he said his living room is decorated as a, an homage to the old westerns. Like John and Wayne like and John Ford oh, movies? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's serious. Back I to mean, the Future 3? He probably likes it. I didn't talk to him about that. Well, we'll have to find out. Yeah. But he's a really great guy, great fan of uh, After Hours, great fan of Ricky Bittman's jukebox. He's a fan and, of all Rastani yeah. Productions. And really, I, this is, wasn't the first time I talked Like I said, we used to talk on Twitter spaces yeah. at like 2, 3 in the morning. And he always used to say, where's Ricky Bittman? I know. I, well, you know, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm, an old, I'm older than the you The only guys. time Ricky Bittman ever used to come into the Twitter spaces when he was drunk on Christmas or that New was, Year's that Eve. That was a good time. Right. And that, that, that young man we spoke to, he passed away. Oh, right? our good friend Nate over, yeah. in, uh, over in England. Great yeah. kid. He, he great I mean, time with him, it's, it's a shame. He was one of my favorite people. Even though I never met him personally, yeah. we talked on Twitter Spaces with a few other people yeah. every night for seven months straight. Yeah. Every night. You get to know people yeah, well, you know when you talk to people for four or five hours a night. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. So it was it, it was it was it was sad when he passed away back yeah. in October. He had he had, you know, demons. Yeah. I was gonna leave it at that. And uh, I really miss that guy. Yeah. I really miss no, Nate. I could tell when he passed. Nate, Nate was a great guy, and he loved Bull, and he loved everybody on the program. Yep. And, uh, you know, he was responsible for Bull getting in, in, into a fight with Fence Cat. Oh, I remember that. Right. Fence Cat has passed away also. That's right. I, I found out about that before Nate passed. And you know what Fence Cat's first name was? What? What's the most oddest name you would name a cat? Doggy? Well, that's other than that. <laughs> Rover? No. S Spot? Terry. Terry? <laughs> How come? Who names a cat Terry? Yeah. Hi, Terry. You know, you name Hulk Hogan Terry. Yeah, you don't only name if a could, cat Terry. You'd only give a cat a, a human name if the cat could talk. Right. Why do uh, of all the hey, names. Bring Terry over here. Uh, I want to talk to him. Of all the names, like for, um, of why Terry? Names. I don't know. It's a human name. You don't name a cat Paul. <laughs> and, and it's one of those funny names, right. too. It's like, it, it is a, do you ever, it, I wish I could remember it, but Norm MacDonald had a great routine about his uncle that went to Vietnam. And he tells this really long, drawn-out story about his uncle. Right. His uncle Terry. And he went out to Vietnam, and he'd come back, you know, he had the, the necklace of ears and everything. He did all these awful things, killed a lot of people. And he's telling this whole story and everything. So he goes, so you know the uh, moral of this story is, don't you? And he was, I think he was talking like Jimmy Fallon or something. He's like, I have no idea. And he's been talking a long time. He goes, don't fuck with Uncle Terry when he's been drinking. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> but just, it just builds and builds. And you don't builds. fuck with Terry the fence cat either. <laughs> there you go. Terry. Uh, Terry. You know, did you have pets growing up, Quincy? Yeah, I think I, I recall I found this German shepherd. and um, What was the dog's name? What'd you call it? I named it Oliver. Oliver? That's even worse. <laughs> well, then, then but what I, no, but the thing was, like, no, uh, no, what? Did you name it Oliver after the Tiki on the Brady Bunch? Yeah. Of course. Of course he did. But but what I did was just a little kid. That's something Jeff would do. Yeah. Well, I uh, named him Oliver <laughs> after the uh, cheeky and the uh, Brady Oh, bunch. for goodness sakes, take it, I take it. <laughs> okay, I had a dog growing up. I didn't name it because the dog came when I was very young. They, they called it Jody after Jody from Family, <laughs> Family Affair. Family Affair. Well, uh, the truth of the matter is, after my mother bought some pet food and everything, I tried to find its owner, walked around a couple of doors, and then finally, we called the police department, the Stone Police Department says, we have a lost German Shepherd that my son found. And um, His name's we, Oliver, we yeah. think. And um, <laughs> He told us his name. I tried to find its owner, and uh, we believe that uh, the dog belonged to somebody. We'd, so we'd like to turn it over to you and pray to God that he, it goes back to the owner. And um, so they came over to the house, picked up the German Shepherd and the pet food, and um, we can only hope that yeah, but, let's hope, huh? Because well, we know what the alternative The dog was, was uh, <laughs> friendly, and I played with the dog, you know, and then it's like... Yeah. Well, cops love German Shepherds. Yeah, they do. So well, they, they probably adopted it. It could have been like a, a, a cop dog, a canine unit. It, it was a friendly dog, and I was just a little kid. Some dogs are nice, and some dogs are nice. Right. But the thing you got to remember, uh, one of the most important things, put the dog on a leash for all reasons, because that mm -hmm. way when the dog gets... Uh, There's Bear on a leash right now. That's right. We're watching Rastani Productions Bear over there. It's they, super dog. Well, that, I want that dog. That is why they have leash laws. Because that way, um, if your pet tries to run away, you can take control of the pet. Uh, you know, because once more, they try to attack another pet or bite a human being. You know, you're going to pay the consequences. That's why they have leash laws.
an and, album. And you could get rabies. Yeah. You get rabies, and they get, they get tetanus shots. You know, you're going to put your pets on a leash when they take them for a walk. Okay? It's good advice. Thank, thank you, advice. Bob Barker. All good right. advice. <clears throat> Get well, your pet spayed and neutered. As we're recording this, we're just prior to Easter. Mm -hmm. You know, the, yeah. big, the big Christian religious holiday yeah, down there. Yeah, yeah. You got any big plans for Easter? I do. I got, I got to go over to Southie. My, uh, one of my sisters is having an annual Easter gathering, right. so Tosh Lent and I got to go over there and have Easter dinner. You going to have family. ham and tater tots? Yeah, we do the ham, but, you know, I, I you know, my brother-in-law... The, the two of them, they always really make a big deal out of the holidays, and they have the nicest the place to, and the most space to do it. So they're kind of like always stuck doing it. So I try to help out. So I make the mashed potatoes, and I make the turnip. Do you have a secret to your mashed potatoes? I do. And you know what? When Tosh Lent isn't looking, I put half and half in them instead of milk. Really? Yeah. It makes okay. them a little creamier. A little creamier. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I wanted to throw in a little sour cream one year, but some people don't like it. You like this. garlic in your mashed potatoes? I love that, but I, I know. Well, how, how do people not like that? Because the, the people, they, they, <clears throat> their palates just. I love garlic mashed potatoes. I, I love all things zesty and spicy. Right. I mean, you know, I Especially love... garlic. I mean, I love mashed potatoes. Yeah. Everybody says, what's your favorite food yeah. ever? It's mashed potatoes. Potatoes, yeah, okay. Yeah. But when I discovered garlic mashed potatoes, yeah. oh, like 30, 30 something yeah. years ago, I was like, ooh. Like even when they make the red red potatoes with garlic and you know, all oh, like that, you can yeah. just you know, the, leave the, the skin on a little bit. The, well, that's German uh, potato salad. Yes, that's the German potato salad's in a classic. You make it with the vinegar yeah. instead of the mayonnaise. Yep. With a little mustard in it. See, that. Tosh makes her potato salad. See, I'm the sous chef. I got to boil the potatoes and I have to cut them all up right. into small pieces. She marinates them in apple cider vinegar, puts a little garlic powder in there, but then she puts yellow mustard. Mm. Brings it to a whole nother level of uh, tanginess now, and now flavor. Now, you have never had my vegan potato salad. Oh, dear God. What, Every, is, what is it made out of? Well, Old well, clothespins? No, it's potatoes. Okay. The only thing vegan in it is the mayonnaise. Okay. All, all right. right. I, I can see that. So I've had all the slobs that come over the houses yeah. for the barbecues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the Maki Dustins and whatnot. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, all those, you know, be, who would eat, you know. He's very flexible. Who, who would eat, you know, <laughs> dog shit if it had ketchup on it. <clears throat> he would, this is one of the greatest potato salads I've ever had. They should just sell hot dogs at the brewery. Yeah, hot dogs at the she, brewery and these potato salads. You can't get hot dogs anywhere else. So the way I do it. Yeah. Is, you know, there's really no big secret to potato salad. No, but, uh, but I'm intrigued. Okay, so basically what I do is, it's, it's pretty simple, is I get red potatoes, mm -hmm. and I cut them up into cubes. Very nice. You know, boil them. After you cut them? After you cut them. Okay. No, 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 I cut them first and then boil. That's what I mean. All right. So they're boiling, right. you know, red potato cubes okay. in there. You let it cool. Yeah. Drain the water. Okay. Let it cool a little. Yeah. Take the vegan Hellman's mayonnaise, okay. take a shitload of it, put it in there. That's what I like, a lot of the mayonnaise. Okay. Chopped onions, you know, whether red or yellow, doesn't, you know, whatever one's the cheapest of the day. Okay. Put it in there. I, I, I also put in pickle juice. Delicious. Pickle juice. Not much, just yeah. a little hint of pickle juice. I like pickle juice. I drink it right out of the jar. I put it in the freezer yeah. for about 45 minutes. Okay. Let it get a nice chill. Yeah. Then I take it out and I douse the whole top of it with Lowry season salt. Oh, the Lowry's is good stuff. And then you mix it all in. It looks like, you know, orange. I got to try that. And especially at our barbecues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every time we've had it, you've always been on the road. I know, man. I'm just summertime. You know me, man. I've been, I've been laying low all winter long. I get out there and I just like I understand. I but love the warm weather. See, I don't like the sun because of the complexion. Yeah, it's yeah, half it's, Irish in me. I still, I like the warmth. But we have the warmth. We have the grill going, and it's a I warm get it, day. I get it, I get it. You've only been to the deck once to take that's your right. picture with the uh, with the Jaws license that's plate. Right, that's right, that's right. And, the, uh, and you had your Narragansett shirt I on promise, I promise, I promise. But I make the potato. Even Cousin Leo, who, you know, is a great chef in his own. You know, TC, this is probably one of the greatest potato titles I've ever had. <laughs> and he wasn't kidding either. I know, I got to get there. I got to see him again. You do gotta get to see him I again. Do. I do. I miss Lee. I miss cousin Lee. So we you know. Hopefully, this summer we won't have rain every weekend. Oh, I know. They, they, we can't have the summer we had last year. We can't. We just can't, Quincy. I mean, it rained constantly. Yeah. I, I usually, Quincy knows South Boston Jeff Colonel, uh, even Petunia is showing up a few times. Yeah. You know, we I used to have barbecues every weekend. Yeah. Every Saturday we would have it. It, it was like a holiday on a Monday, like a Labor Day or a, mm -hmm. or a Memorial Day. We got the barbecue on on the Sunday. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody's like, "Where's Bittman?" Yeah, I know. Where's Bittman? I go. I well, he's he's on in the Winnie Bagel. He's on tour. It's like it's like Abby. We've mm -hmm. invited her a million times, but she's always out doing traveling places. And I'll, I'll tell you, what, I'm actually the busiest I am this summer. Really, is only 
April is going to be busy for me, and May is going to be busy on well, the weekends. Well, that's not the summer. Huh? That's not the summer. No, I'm saying, so I like I'll, my activities oh, oh. kind of get pushed back because okay. I have to perform a wedding in Aruba in October. My God, Really? My godson's getting married, and I have to do the nuptials down there. The nuptials. So all my vacation times kind of got shuffled around. So my Cape Week, which is usually in September, right. it's actually going to be in June now. Okay. It's like the third week, of, second or third week of June, and I got a weekend coming up in um, Tampa Bay. To see Kenny Chesney, tell Abby about that. She's going to be jealous because she didn't get tickets to that show. It's the tour kickoff, Kenny Chesney down in uh, Florida. She's probably going to go see a Taylor Swift show somewhere. Oh, Taylor Swift. I mean, Japan or something. Um, Miley Cyrus is a thousand times better than her. We had this conversation a couple of times. I know, but I'm just times times I'm reminding myself. But listen, you got to come to what I uh, promise one I, will. The I, promise I, will. I mean, you know, even. Even the autograph hounds have been there. Jeff has brought all the autograph hounds over. I want a double cheeseburger. All right. Made with just one roll. The the, the two pads. Of course. And not not like the cheese on the top. You gotta put a, a cheeseburger on top of a cheeseburger. So you want two cheeseburger patties, yeah. double stacked, yeah. on a hamburger roll. Exactly. And what do you put on it? If it if uh you, you know, people are going to think I'm weird. I, I like nothing on my cheeseburger. Okay. If, if, the, if it's juicy enough, yeah, you don't need anything. Exactly. A little salt and pepper. They're going to say like peanut butter or something no, over no. there. Now, Quincy, when, when we have the barbecue, what, what's your favorite thing that I cook at the barbecue? Well, you make an awesome baked potato. Well, I do. Well, actually, I don't make it. The grill does. Well, it, but okay. Yeah. Well, um, baked what, potatoes on the grill are good. <clears throat> yeah, they take time. You make an awesome uh, burger. Right. Mm, dog. What, what, about the, what about the ribs that I make? Okay, you gotta let's have a double round. Mm. With barbecue sauce, those are awesome. What I use is I use the country style pork ribs. I was gonna say they gotta be pork. Country style pork ribs, the thick ones, yeah. right? Kind of like the ones you get over at the New Bridge, but mine are a little bit bigger. Okay. And you right. make it awesome. The thing about your ribs, um, you choose a very excellent barbecue sauce. You know what I use? Market basket barbecue yeah, sauce. Nice. Well, the, the thing about the, you need to learn about uh, barbecue sauces. Not too spicy. I just like. Well, it's plain. not spicy. It's just it's plain flavored it's, barbecue. You just said it for me. Um, for me, I like just plain regular barbecue sauce. Um, not too spicy. Not. And what I do is I put them. I marinate them mm, yeah. for like for like three hours. Not like an overnight. Deal. Now these aren't like the ones you buy that they're already like in a package. These are raw. Ribs, right? Well, they're in a package, but they're not. But I mean, they, okay, they're not like Lloyd's. Or those no, ones. no, no, okay, no. Okay. These are like market basket cuts. All right. You know, they've actually been butchered like a few right. couple hours before. Okay. And they're like, you know, really thick looking like pork chop ribs. Are they all the same size? No. I was going to say, because those are, um, what do they call those? St. Louis style. No, no. They're the same size. No, no. These aren't racks. Okay. These are just like country style ribs. They're individual. They're oh, not attached. They come out of the pack and they're good sized ribs okay. and you cook them on the grill like for a certain amount so of these time. Are, these are, I think we call these spare ribs, are they? They're, yeah. they're the country style spare ribs. Okay. Or those country style pork ribs. They're pretty big. Because yeah, that and sounds then, like a spare rib. Well, the thing about the, the way you, uh, you cook oh, them on thick. the grill. You put them on the grill, cook right. them, and then you pour the uh, barbecue sauce all over the hot rib, and that's how you melt the flavor right on the rib. It is. It's mm. got that gristle on it, and you know, mm. it just it melts in your mouth. It's good stuff. You just say it for me. It melts in your mouth. Everybody way- was asking, when are you going to cook your ribs? Mm. So the potato yeah, salad- like, uh, what's his name there? Holly Race. You're going to become like him pretty soon. That's right. No, the no. meat is going to fall off the bone. Eat those ribs, Yankee. It's it's. Well, technically, it's done right. These, technically, some of these ribs don't have the bone. Ah, these are definitely spare ribs then. They're, they're gigantic. Yeah, Andre the Giant yeah. spare ribs. Okay. They're like, they look like a brontosaurus rib that you see on the Flintstones. Oh, those, yeah. But better because they're real. I'm going to uh, I'm, I'm going to have some ribs tomorrow night down in Floramos. Well, there you go. Uh, have have a good time. You know? You're going to eat meat on Good Friday? Yeah. Well, I haven't really been practicing this uh, Easter season. I can't be a hypocrite. I can't be. My mother would strike me down. I know, I know. Well, yeah, I don't just, eat meat anymore. I eat fish now, but you yeah. know, but if, I would not be even on a Good Friday. You, Catholic guilt know, still listen, gets me. My buddy Johnny Maff, he, he texted me. He said, "Are you going to church tonight?" And I was like, I, "I, I just really don't like when Easter falls in the month of March. It doesn't feel like Easter to me. It's like when WrestleMania falls in April. It should yeah, be in March. It, it, exactly, exact, hundred percent. Right. Know. It's like yeah, when I Christmas just, falls in September, yeah. right, Quince? Yeah. That's about it. <laughs> the trouble with these holidays." They overlap the decorations on another one, and it's like it, yeah. this is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, it's right not now, even one holiday, and they got these other decorations out, and another one's like this is ridiculous. Right. You know, well, who's putting up these things? I don't know. I you know, hate it when Sam Adams puts out their summer ale in my in uh, March. 
Yeah, you know, it's like... Um, Summer dust starts in June. Right? June 21st. And you know what? After 4th of July, you know what you see in the liquor stores? Christmas stuff. Oktoberfest for Sam Adams. Speaking. Well, the earliest I saw Christmas stuff was August 25th. Yeah. yeah. I, I had a bet. You know who Maria Stefanos is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Channel 5. Yeah, yeah. This is when she was on Twitter maybe like five, six, seven, eight years ago. Yeah. And she put it out there. What's the <laughs> earliest you've seen anything? And I, and I took a picture and proved it. It was August 25th that I went to a store and they had Christmas ornaments already out. Now, were they left over from the previous Christmas? No, they were not, no. because they, <laughs> Halloween stuff should be out then. Yeah, you Halloween know? is out in September now. Uh, September? I was down the, I used to go down the Cape every, every September. We'd go into the CVS filled with Halloween candy. We'd buy a bag of candy corn. Well, so September I can see. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, it's, the, it's, it's still the, beautiful. It's, it's, it's still, that's like the best weather is it's, it's a month away. Yeah. But, you know, if you're going to see uh, Halloween stuff like in July, like the four, the 5th of July, no, no, you start seeing bad. That's bad. Halloween stuff. That's dumb. It's crazy. Because Christmas, when you think about it, only really disappears for what? Maybe five months yeah. out of the year. Yeah, if, if, you, if I'm seeing it in August, yeah. and then some people keep their Christmas tree up until some, some people even up until early March. Yeah, yeah. So you're talking about March, April, May, June, July, six months That's too long. out of the year, Christmas disappears. Yeah. It, it should be gone for like 11 months yeah, out of the year. It should be because then it becomes something special. Right. But whatever. But you know, you, you look at Christmas and you look at Halloween and all the movies. and Like Easter to me is the most boring. Uh, holiness aside, because it's the most solemn time of the year in the Catholic Church or Christian calendar is Easter. I get that, but like the I don't like I don't think we should have an Easter dinner. You know, it's just because, why? Because it's, it's ham. Not everyone likes ham. I like it, but not everyone likes it. You know, I just think forcing the families to get together again for something well, is just a pain put, in the ass. Well, we just did St. Patrick's Day. Then it's going to be Memorial Day weekend, and then it was going to get together, and then after that is Fourth of July. Give us Easter. But you know what the best Easter I ever had? What's that? I had Celtic season tickets, and the Celtics were playing at 2 o'clock in the Boston Garden, and it was 70 degrees that day, and all the bars had their open patios open. That's how I celebrated Easter. Was Aztec Gino there? He was. Okay. Then the that's, Celtics that's, kicked ass. See, I don't like Easter because you never had it off. It was a Sunday. You already, True. You had it off. They, well, you should have Monday off. Why couldn't I, Jesus have died on a Saturday? Oh, boy. And then we would have had the Monday yeah, off. Exactly. Well, you know, not to be you know, anti-religious or anything, you. but in Canada, they have Easter Monday. They have it off as a holiday. It would be nice to have it because I'm exhausted come Easter. I don't know. I mean, the day after Easter. I mean, I'm just tired. Must be the three hours plus I spend watching the Ten Commandments on Saturday night. Oh, especially with commercials. Yes. ABC used to run though all bum, the time. Bum, 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 bum. That's with Charlton bum. Heston. And uh, the very fetching uh, Yvonne De Carlo. Oh, that's true. Beautiful in that movie. She was way before Lily Munster. Yeah, yeah, she's gorgeous. I remember that. I mean, I had to. The two movies that were around during Easter time were Wizard of Oz. Yep. And the Ten Commandments. And Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. And <laughs> Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. And I had to watch all three of those. Now, after a while, The Wizard of Oz gets boring. Yeah, um, I get you, I get you. And the Ten Commandments, it was just way too long. Yeah. I mean, I've watched it you know, on DVD without commercials and whatnot, and it's a fantastic, you know, epic film. And, I mean, when you think about it, how did they film that back in the 50s? That's what I mean. For, for, for the time, it was... It, it's. Speaking as a of, as a movie, not as a story of the right, Ten right, Commandments right. or the Old Testament, but speaking as a movie, it's a cinematic achievement. I mean, it, it defines the term epic. When you look at those scenes where there's just thousands of people, that was before CGI. Yeah, there's no green screen. It yet. was it was all it was shot in CinemaScope, which was the huge aspect ratio. I'm telling you, and it was just epic. I mean, yeah, it, it was the Ten Commandments a little bit boring at times. It, was, it could be, sure. but, you know, by the same token, it was, you know. What was the movie? You must know the name of this, where they were doing the crucifixion and, uh, uh, what was it called? The robe? And and the robe, uh, Jesus' robe started choking the Roman soldier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah, robe. Yeah, the robe. That's right. Jeez, I haven't thought of that movie forever. Uh, wasn't, 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 that what, wasn't Max von Sido Jesus in that? I think he was. Right. <laughs> the East of Memories are just flowing in my head. <laughs> you got more of them than I do. It I'm was, you know, going to church and, you know, dressing up in your little Easter outfit and whatnot and doing an Easter egg hunt, which, you know, never, I mean, it was boring even as a child. I, you know, wouldn't have fun with that. Believe it or not, I am listening. I'm trying to look up at the smoke shows in this movie. Do you know in the Ten Commandments that Frasier Clark Heston, Charlton Heston's son, Played the baby Moses in the in, in, the, in, in, the, in the bassinet. In the, yeah. No, I did not know that. Yeah, I did. I, I, I did not know. I did not know that. And uh, who's the one? Deborah Pageant. Who's Deborah Pageant? Now she played uh, Bithia, the one that um, 
Edward G. Robinson had the hots for her. He stole her, made her a slave girl. Do we have a picture? Oh, yeah. I, I, see, I, I just remember Charlton Heston and, and Lily Munster was in this movie. She was the slave girl. These are all my buddies are um, texting, but look at that's her. You, you'd remember if you saw her. Oh, wow. But I'm trying to find the woman who played Charlton Heston's love interest that ended up marrying uh, Yul Brenner, but I couldn't find her. She, I can't find her in here. You know, Yul Brenner was in a movie called The Ultimate Warrior. No. When I was a kid, like in the late 80s, I, you know, stupid me, I was like, I knew it wasn't, but I watched it just to see if The Ultimate Warrior was <laughs> <laughs> and my grandparents were like, this movie was made in like 1953. He wasn't even a that gleam in goddamn, someone's eyes. That goddamn goofy rest is not going to be in it. But he, I still watched it. You know who else was in this movie? No. I probably do, but I don't remember. Okay, there's a character, Rachel. Who I can't remember who she is in the movie. Played by Sissy from uh, Family Affair. Oh, Kath Kathy Garver was in this movie. You know, she's still out there peddling shit. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what you got to do. Well, we just mentioned my dog's name was Jody. That's right. So it's just it's, it's a family affair here on After Hours tonight. This is, like I said, this is a great movie on so many levels. And then, of course, you got Devon DeCarlo. But imagine just going to that movie, it, 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 how epic that was in like 19, whatever it came out, 19, I'm going to say 53, 54. 56. 56, yep. WLVI. And watching that for the first time back then. Yeah. I mean, I, I, they were, when people saw Star Wars, like, how did they do that? Yeah. How did they do that? How did, how did they do it? I mean, it's amazing. I mean, it is amazing. And it probably won like a gazillion Oscars and I whatnot. I don't know if it did, but look, look, Edward G. Robinson was in it. Vincent Price was in oh, it. Oh, Vinny. John Derrick, Bo Derrick's husband right. at one time, he was, was in it. Was Ursula Andrews in this as well? Because even Jeez. though all the women he eventually married all looked the same. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Ursula yeah. Andrews, Linda Evans, and Bo Derrick. They, they could have been sisters. No, I didn't know Mike Connors from Mannix was in this. Really? Yeah, he played a a, a Malachite herder. He was he was like an extra. So you got to figure he was probably just a character actor or, or just like he well, was read, nothing. Read, read off the rest of this. Who are they? I'm trying to think of who like future would, people were in this. Let's see. So uh, we got all the obvious's. Uh, we got, of course, Yul Brenner, Edward G. Robinson, uh, yeah, the Bithia, the slave girl. I'll have her for my own. Charlton Heston's son, uh, Vincent Price, John Carradine. He played uh, Moses' brother Aaron. He fashioned the golden calf. Okay, he, father of Robert Peter, Carradine, yeah, Peter Pressure, Lewis from uh, Revenge of the Nerds. They even got that hot black chick in here, Esther Brown, who played Princess Darbis, the one they uh, brought in the uh, people from. Uh, it was it Ethiopia? I'm gonna have to watch this now. It's gotta be on YouTube somewhere <laughs> or, or Amazon Prime. I, I don't know. I, I don't think you can. I think the only thing you I can must have this on DVD somewhere. I'm sure you do. Oh, and um, Frank Dakova, who played one of the Indians on F Troop. Really? Yeah. You 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 must have seen an episode of F Troop here and there. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. Yeah, F Troop so, was always on TV. Yeah, and he's it in there. It is Berlin. <laughs> Who else was in there? I don't know who Mimi Gibson is. Uh, Mimi, it's Robert Gibson's mother. <laughs> Kenneth McDonald, who was in a bunch of the Three Stooges shorts, he's in there. He plays Slave Number Fourteen. <laughs> oh, like like Jawa Number Three in Star Wars. Of course, then it says Kim Dibbs, and there's a picture of Frank Sinatra. So who knows? Maybe this is not a reliable source. But and then like Charlton Histon is like mentioned at the very end. But Kathy Garver, she was Rachel. Wow. Who directed this film again? Oh, that was Cecil B. DeMille. Cecil, oh, excuse me, Mr. B. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. Well, he was DeMille. also the one who did the, um, the, the, the other one with Charlton Heston, the, uh, the zoo train accident one. Oh, The Circus. Yeah, but what was that movie called? I think it was called The Circus. No, it was like The Greatest, uh, the greatest Show on Earth or something. Oh, that's what it was. Yes, yes, about the Ringling Brothers right. and Bonham and Bailey. It was Circus. the one, the yeah. movie that inspired Steven Spielberg to become a filmmaker. Yes, 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 yes. That's right. That's exactly the one he did. Right. And he did um, Ben Hur as well. That's right. According to this, you can watch it on Apple TV and Prime Video, but it looks like you have to pay for both. Three ninety nine. Guess I won't be watching yeah. it this Easter weekend. You got it Friday night. You get it on Friday night. I mean Saturday night. It's going to be on. Oh, it is. Well, yeah. it has commercials. I'm not going to sit through a three hour movie with two hours of commercials. They go by quick. No, they don't. <laughs> is it edited? Like, remember back in the in the. Uh, no, this is not edited you know, for television. Ed edited for television. No. Remember how excited you were back in like the seventies and eighties on the ABC Sunday Night movie, and it had that, oh, that opening. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. It had the fucking stars. Like you were flying. Oh you know? my god! T tonight, yeah. Christopher Reeve is Superman. Yeah. Oh, well, you'd get you'd, you'd be like, yeah. Even yeah. though I've seen the movie a million oh. times, the way they actually and the guy's voice and introduce everything. it. Yeah. Well, we're, we're the only ones. True fans, I remember the openings, the credits, like da 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 da. Well, that was that was Ernie Anderson. 
the, the, uh, the voiceover right. guy. Yeah. His, his, his son is Paul Thomas Anderson, who directed Boogie So Nights. very important that uh, you remember that. There's actually a great documentary about him, and you can see him. He was doing like the voiceovers for like the ABC you know, Tuesday night lineup, you know, on Who's the Boss? <laughs> and then he would find he was going, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, that's right. I've heard yeah. those. And then he's like, you know, tonight on Roseanne. You're going to get in trouble for this? That's not the one I'm thinking of. This is the ABC Sunday night movie. Let me try to find the one I'm, I'm talking about. You, 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 you and, you and uh, Bittman talk for a second. So anyway, sure. this whole Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ Superstar, we've got to get this production off the ground. I'm having so much fun. There's the rehearsal. Now what? We rehearsed tonight. Tell everybody how great the rehearsal is. I am having so much fun. We, we did Act 1. You know, we grew up with this movie, Jesus Christ Superstar, and I came with that there. we got to go out there and do this. You know, just... It's good, clean cut fun, and and I came in ice cold. You didn't even know I was going to do that, did you? No, I think it's awesome. It's everlasting. I came in, ladies and gentlemen. I hit the play button, and we started right off with uh, Judas at the beginning of the uh, play, and Quincy just jumped right in. You know, it's like this is it. You know, we're going to start our rehearsals now and get this thing moving. My mind is clear enough. now. At last, all too well, you will see, see where we all soon, soon will be. be. And if I just started. Strip away. Go ahead. I just started dancing and singing to this things like it's time for rehearsals. You know, put all of the things aside, and and when they started singing, what's the buzz? I just started dancing like a maniac. And see, I met the people from Superstar, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. They did a convention down in New Jersey, Chilla. Yeah. Who's the girl saying, "If I can't have you, I'm the Bond Element." That's she was very good. Right. Wow. She, she was in that movie, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, Ned, somebody was Ned. Jesus. Ned Sully, no, Ned... Uh, Whatever his name, Ned who played Jesus Christ. I remember but, Murray Head, I remember him. Well, Ned, the guy who played Jesus Christ, was, uh, remember Donnie, the signature boy, the kid who yeah, had yeah, all yeah, the, yeah. He loved him, and they had like a... He actually thought it was Jesus, the way they wow, were interacting really? with each other. And he was a very nice guy. Yeah. And well, then, I'll go, you go no, first. No, 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 go ahead. You're well, the thing, the thing was, I can, everyone said, how come you play all the bad guys? Like, anyone can sing the good guys, which I can, but someone has to play the bad guys in order... To have these newer generations learn. George Takei always says, it's how you grow as an actor, playing a villain. Well, the thing about Jesus Christ Superstar, it's such a sweet melody from both the bad guys and the good guys. It's like, I grew up with this thing, so it's like, you know what? Why not go out somewhere and do it? Mm. And we can all participate, and the bad guys and the good guys, and let the audiences get into it. It's I, just, I think that we're going to have to talk to Abby, because she has a lot of theater connections. Theater. Uh, that you, we should get you a one-man performance of yeah. Jesus Christ Superstar. We'll do it down here at Rustani Productions. Set up a couple chairs, and you and Bittman can do your thing. Let's do it. Try and get some audiences, people, as much as we can, but go out there and do it. We're going to have Abby play Mary Magdalene. We were discussing that before you came in. We'll try to get some. She would sing that song really nice, that one. She has a fantastic voice. Yeah. We'll try to get a few people if we can, but basically just go out there and do it. Do you play think we can get this ready by this Sunday? What's that now? Think we can get this ready by this Sunday? Or should we wait till next Easter? Who says we got to... Maybe we can do it after Easter. Well, that's true, we, yeah. We can do it on the Greek Easter. There you go. That's in May. They make all their eggs red. Right. Yeah, the thing is, cool. get the pros. Let the pros come down here and have, take a look at us. And let, let them like... Uh, We're the pros. Yeah. But uh, you just mentioned like uh, a pro. Her name is Abby. Yeah. Uh, and that way, like, uh, just do it. Just basically... Have fun with it and do it. We'll, we'll get her. We'll get her. I mean, we have a production meeting coming up sometime in, right. in, in April. But this is the one. This is the theme from the ABC Oh, okay. Movie. All right. All right. Hold on here. Okay. Shh. Oh, yeah. And it had the stars, the red, white, and blue stars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that buildup. Tonight on ABC, Christopher Reeve plays the Man of Steel. Well, the other one, William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, and <laughs> Ricardo Montalban star in the network television premiere of Star Trek II, The, the Wrath, Wrath of, of God. God. 
that opening, you know, that also reminds me of the HBO. Uh, oh yeah, we, spaceship. We, yeah, that was good. That was a classic. That one still gives me goosebumps yeah, when I watch that. Very exciting. A long time ago. Exactly. That's what I would be saying. So important that they we remember the openings to these movies. I are you kidding me? I that ABC Saturday Night thing was one of the greatest moments of the week. Yeah. Seeing that. You know what the movie was because they previewed it all week long. Oh, it was in the TV guide. Even everything. though you've seen the movie a gazillion times, mm -hmm. just the fact that it was on TV yeah. and you knew millions yeah. of people were watching all this watching with it you. at the same time. And if you didn't watch it, you missed it. And then the next day in school, did you watch the ABC yeah. thing? Did you see that? Because a lot of those movies that were on the ABC uh, Sunday Night, Saturday Night movie were the TV versions, and they put in deleted scenes that weren't true. in the movie. I remember Jaws did that. They put a, that was the, the Quint the, scene. The clarinet scene. In and the, uh, and the one um, also the... Uh, Oh, what was the other one from uh, Jaws that they they cut out? Oh, often I'm, I'm going to losing a blanket, but I do the clarinet scene was one of them, or yeah. the one when he got the the, the the piano wire as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. When Quentin was riding his bike. Yep, that was funny actually riding a bike. Because then the thing was going ba 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 ba. Now, but remember getting your homework done when you were a kid? I never did homework. <laughs> you rush home from work from school. You'd get your homework done. You'd have your dinner because you knew at some point you were going to be hearing this theme song. Well, let's hear it. Oh, it's a commercial. Hold on. It's a, of course it's a commercial. Four seconds, but it's going to go on right after this. Here we go. You knew something good was going to happen. Oh. Rudolph. Of course. Rudolph or the uh, Charlie Brown. Charlie right. Brown. Yeah. Of course, that's so important that you remember these openings before Rudolph, Charlie Brown. And what network was that? ABC. Wrong. Yeah. No, it's NBC. CBS. 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 One more CBS. guess. CBS uh, had that um, because CBS um, you know, had the classical. And, and after that, there we go. Tonight's regularly scheduled program will not be seen, so we may bring you. Yeah. Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. Reindeer. <laughs> Trapper John MD will not be seen this yeah. week. <laughs> Goodbye, Trapper. <laughs> In its place. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Those are good memories, huh? They because, are sweet memories. You know, even though we have eight trillion channels on our TVs now, it was much better when we had three. It really was because you actually had to watch it. Yeah, you did. There was. I mean, if you had a VCR, yeah, you know, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. but it was still you still watched it as you yeah. were recording it yeah. because I knew what I used to do is I. Used Pause for the commercials to get yeah, rid yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But back then, you had your rabbit ears, you had yeah. you had your ABC, yeah. your NBC, your CBS, and your UHF channels. The UHF channels, yeah. Right. In our area, it was WSBK TV 38, yep. WLVI TV 56, <laughs> and yeah. WFXT Channel 25, yep. and Channel 27 out of Worcester. Yep. I can remember I discovered on Channel 25 one night, they used to do uh, animated classics. They did... Treasure Island, Kidnapped, all these old, like, they still books you'd have to read in school. And they were these great stories, like Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. And I was like, then I got into reading all these books. So television does help you. I mean, I, I told, I well, kept, the thing about television uh -oh. makes the kids want to learn. Yeah. Well, and then they go to their read. mommies and daddies, like, then maybe they'll go back and read the books later. But, Television did try to get kids to read. Remember that commercial with Riff. Ed Asner? Or Riff, reading is pretty fundamental. smart. How'd you get so smart? The kid uh, reading. Would, reading. You don't remember the riff one where they had the, is in, the inner city kid going to like a, a book truck? A bookmobile, getting, yeah. Getting the book and going down to like the East River underneath yeah. the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> you know, riff, reading is fundamental. I tell my nephews who are 19 and 13 years old, yeah. I learned everything that I know in life from television. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, I went to school, and, you know, but I learned the alphabet from Sesame Street. Yeah. I learned how to count from yeah. Sesame yeah, Street. Yeah, yeah. All right? Everything else I learned from television. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason we got all got into it because, you know, it was it was it was embedded into our head. Saturday morning cartoons in between they put on multiplication rock. And believe it or not, that did learn School some House of it. Schoolhouse Rock was very important. Schoolhouse Rock, you know, and it worked uh, for most of us, me included. Uh, I learned how not to set myself on fire because of Webster. Stop, drop, and roll. Stop, drop, and roll. So, you know, yeah. if, if uh, Richard Pryor was watching Saturday morning yeah. cartoons when he lit himself on fire, yeah. he would not have gotten scot. Yeah. And I learned not to be molested by watching different strokes. 
by Gordon Jump. Gordon Jump. Gordon Jump, your bones, Dudley. Because he, he was the bike repair guy. Yeah, yeah. Hey, do you boys like to watch cartoons? <laughs> well, depend, like I said, you depend, like to take Valium and eat a lot of spaghetti. Depending on the cartoon, little kids will, if you set the right influence, they will learn from the I, cartoon. I really thought you were going to say something else. I was oh, like, okay, get the button out quick. Depending on how it's written, the script is written right, it will set a good influence. Quincy, have you ever watched gladiator films? Yeah. I probably did. You ever yeah. see a grown man naked? <laughs> but yeah, even as a kid watching Saturday mornings, in between, you know, the Land of the Lost yeah. and the Sigmund and the Sea Monsters and the Smurfs, you learn stuff. Yeah. They, you know, and it, they don't do that anymore. No, they don't. I, you know, every now and then, for some reason, when I wake up on a Saturday morning and I put the TV on while I have my coffee and I get ready to watch On Patrol Live, my favorite TV show, for some reason, whatever show, I think my wife watched a lot of PBS, so it would be on like a kid's cartoon in the morning. These cartoons are awful. I don't watch them. They're all stupid. All the kids in them, all of their, everybody's a baby. Like the, the cats are like babies. Like, hangy, hangy. Like there's no Bugs Bunny, you know, with a stick of dynamite. Or, you know, there's nobody, you know, there's no, they're not putting any gangsters in ovens. There's no giant space <laughs> monsters walking around. The only, the only things I ever watched on P PBS when I was a kid were obviously Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers, The Electric Company. And uh, Zoom. Zoom. Come even, on, and Zoom, Zoom, at Zoom, that. Zoom. But even Sesame Street, they had balls. Oscar was, you know, you know, Roach. yeah, and it, it was, and then you had e, uh, e, Electric Company, you had Spider Man, you had Easy Reader, he was cool, right? Morgan Freeman, that's right, and they had they, like some of the chicks on there were cute and everything, you know. You now it's everything. You look at them someday, they were all like these little babies, like marching around all talking. And Morgan about, Freeman was good in that. And Morgan he, Freeman was so good in the Electric Company. He played the dish jockey, and they played that. Um, I love to talk about and a casket, a casket. You and me. It's like he makes these kids want to learn. Mm, you know, well, that's true. And it was another show I used to watch on weekends on on uh, public television, was Granite State Challenge. Oh, that was always good. Yeah. You know, I you know I, I realized how dumb I was yeah, watching yeah. that show. So you didn't quite learn everything from television. Well, but I learned because I watched Granite <laughs> yeah, State true. Challenge learned, with that you, with that French guy. Whatever learned, his name was. You learned how stupid we were. Right. I, well, you know what? I really do. I really need to know the capital. Of you know South yeah. Dakota, like the answer is like what he the Marquis de Sade. Like who needs to know that? I don't even know what he is, but I know I heard. Well, it the Marquis de Sade was in a movie called Waxworks. Okay, so he was in a movie. All right, you know the only reason I saw that is because <laughs> my favorite was... actor is Marquis de Sade. <laughs> <laughs> you like whips, Quincy? <laughs> What's a whip? <laughs> orange whip, orange whip, orange whip, orange whip. Indiana Jones's whip. Uh, are these candies or licorice whip? Oh, I like. I used to like those when I was a kid. Yeah, but okay. But yeah, I used to. I mean, PBS. You know, I even remember my elementary school teachers. You know, if you're falling behind in school, yeah. you know, watch PBS, Sesame Street, mm -hmm. Granite State Challenge, all these shows. I used to say that the PTA things. You know, TC is a very intelligent, but he yeah. lacks focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to buckle down. Mm. And uh, you know, and I found out. Wait a minute. I can learn all this crap, and, and you know I have to go to school. There's yeah. a rule, but you tell me I could watch this stuff on on Channel Two, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, "Yeah." My teacher said too much Steve Martin. That's what they wrote on my report card once. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that story. story. You know, I was I had too much Dukes of Hazard when I was a kid, <laughs> but you know I was learning about the South. You were. You know, and look what we learned now. It was an evil, horrible place. We thought it was great. I mean, <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, the, the General Lee is like is like Christine incarnated yeah. now, because it had a Confederate flag on the roof. I can remember on PBS and like the weekdays, if I was home sick, they would show a show called uh, Reflections and another one called Bread and Butterflies. I don't and remember they, those. They would do these like kids acting out these scenarios. Like there was a like one was racism it was because it was set up in Canada, and the kid called the other one a French frog. Okay. And they had a fight over, and the parents had to explain to them why you can't do that. It was informative, but it was also entertaining at the same time because the kids were our age acting out all these great scenarios that were very interesting. One was when the teachers decided to leave the school. It was an experiment, and the kids could self-govern themselves. And the experiment was what will happen. Now, it was, again, it was all dramatized, but by the same token, it was very interesting. So I always got something, a little bit something out of that. But, of course, that all went down the crapper when one night I'm watching PBS, and I was watching Monty Python, and a topless woman came out. 
Game over. <laughs> well, to me, I was watching New Zoo Review. <laughs> no, they, you didn't have to be topless for that. No, because Emmy Joe's boots yeah. did it for you. And oh. you're sitting there like, you know, I'm seven, eight years yeah. old. And why am I? Well, I don't yeah. care. I, I should be interested in what Freddie the Frog and yeah. Charlie Al, but, but Emmy Joe yeah. and her boots do, running around in a circle. Yeah. yeah, that Henrietta just is not doing it for me. Right. And how did <laughs> how did Doug, not Doug, our good friend Doug Blum, yeah. but Doug from the New Zoo Review score Emmy Joe yeah, in real life? They're still together. Right. And she's still good looking. She's still good looking. She's like eighty years old, yeah. and and Doug still looks like you know, um, you know Eugene Levy's illegitimate <laughs> brother or something. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the news. If you ever watch the news review, you go on YouTube yeah. and uh, look at Emmy Joe. Yeah, all you youngsters <laughs> out there who have no idea what we're talking about. It's sad. Yeah. That they don't know what what, what the new zoo review. You want to know how sick I am? I, I'm going to tell you. That. I've, I've known you for a while, but enlighten us. But I, I will say, I remember being a kid before. I think I even went to school, and I would watch Romper Room for when they did bend and stretch. Okay. Because the girls sometimes you saw their underwear, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> Now, was that, was, that, was, that, was, that, was that the teacher with the mirror I was doing? Miss Jean, yeah. Okay. But they would do this thing, bend and stretch, reach for the stars, there goes Jupiter, here comes Mars. And they would like bend and stretch, and they bend over, and it's like, oh, yeah. Like Benny Hill, when he used to like put his hands up to like the girl's fanny, like it was All right, so you, you had romper room, I had the New Zoo review. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, I was, I think I was a little too young to be this, uh, I mean, I'm attracted to women my own age. Come and ride at you <laughs> with three delightful animals. animals. Forget about the animals. I'm talking about Emmy Joe's yeah. boots. <laughs> Go back yourself, Charlie. <laughs> that, Once you saw me with my cousin Orson. <laughs> my cousin Orson. <laughs> who was a Croft Superstar reference the, there. Yeah, the, that, that's true. Jesus. You know, Sid is coming to town. You tell me all the time. I, I think Sid's great. I'm I just so can't excited. believe the other one's dead, though. Marty. Marty's gone. Yeah. Marty did the voice. The, I, I heard a story. I don't know if it's true, but they had an announcer hired, but I, I don't even got sick or no showed. And he did the the announcing for the Lost Saucer, Marty. He just, oh my god! He goes, he goes, the Lost Saucer, starring Ruth Buzzy <laughs> and Jim Neighbors. And I'm like, it took me decades to really, that was Marty Croft that did that. <laughs> Mr. Croft, can you do it again? No, no, that's <laughs> one take. Jesus Christ, I have a problem over on the Land of the Lost set. We have to renegotiate Chaka's contract, and I've got pornography that needs. Watching, <laughs> you know, every, I've been trying to lure Emmy Joe over, but it just ain't working. Shut up, Sid. Put your hand up another puppet's ass. <laughs> he would have had an awesome podcast. Oh, a grumpy, grumpy Marty Croft. I'm telling you, find the episode where Gilbert interviews the two of them together. It's hilarious. You love it. They don't make cartoons like that anymore. It wasn't a cartoon. Well, no, I'm talking about just anything. These were all Sunday morning classics, you know. Uh, they, they just don't make shows like that anymore. I, I'm they never you, will, unfortunately. I'm telling you, the Croft Entertainment people, they, they have a, a perfect gold mine right there by making a, a new puppet show with evil Marty Croft or the ghost of yeah. Marty Croft. Yeah. I would watch that in the second. Because I met him with Jackie Wilde. Jeez. Who played um, well, the kid on the puffin stuff, yeah, Jimmy. Uh, yeah, Jimmy. And, and he's like, ah, these old Jackie's over there. He's not doing too good. He's a recovering alchemy. Nominated for an Oscar, too. He was? Yeah. For, Not uh, for Puffin Stuff. Oliver. Oliver. Oh, Oliver. for Oliver. Yes. And okay. he was fantastic in that. He was fantastic in Puffin Stuff. Yeah, but he was really good in Oliver. Well, but you know what? On his gravestone, here lies Jackie Wilde. Well, that's he true. was Jimmy in Puffin yeah, no, Stuff. I get it. I get you think Freddie the Flute visits him? You can buy a replica Freddy the Flutes. Really? They're very pricey, but they're out there. How much? I think they're probably like a couple hundred bucks. It's worth it. Yeah. Does it talk? No. Does it go, hi, Jimmy? Hi, Jimmy. Jimmy, look out. Look out. It's Witchy yeah. Poo. You ever hear the song from that, that that movie they did, the H.I. Puff and stuff movie that Jack Wilde sings at the beginning? I must have, but I don't he remember. He like sort of runs slow motion through the, his neighborhood and stuff. It, it's really, it's a very hot warming song. I, I don't know, know, we probably can get sued if we play it, but of, it is on there on YouTube. Of all of the Croft Superstar shows, which one was your favorite? Oh, there's no question H.I. Puff and stuff. Really? Yeah, I liked, I liked, I liked H.I. Puff and stuff. I liked him. I liked those cops because they reminded me of Hoppo Mox. I liked Witchy Poo. What, what, you stuff. mean Kling and Clang? Yes, yes, Kling yeah. and Clang. But no, I, you know, I did have a soft spot for Lidsville. Right. You know, because of my buddy Charles Nelson Riley. <laughs> How's that for a top, huh? Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> he'd come in every day. Like I said, he'd hug Butch Patrick, and he goes, Butch, I love you, and I don't care. Who knows it? You I guess the, the clouds sheet. were good on Nature and Puff and stuff, like winds. They call them winds. That's right, yeah. 
I like the sets and everything. I like the mystery of it. Blow wins. Oh, Jesus. Blow. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like they have four. Like, I said that to Emmy Joe. Yeah. <laughs> and Doug said, hold me back. Hold me back. Freddy's going to hold them back. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Go ahead and fuck her. Everyone else has. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, while you were out there getting craft services, we brought her up to Charlie's little freaking birdhouse and ran a train on her. <laughs> Freddie's smoking a cigar. And there's a man inside that hippo costume. <laughs> it's not Henrietta, it's Henry. <laughs> My name's Bo. Oh, Jesus. He'd fit right in in a Croft super world, wouldn't he? <laughs> just as himself. He just, you know, and special guest, uh, Bo Montana, as himself. Oh, oh God. See, this, we got a spring him from his uh <laughs> from his uh from his rest home and, and meet, meet sid he could be the voice of one of those if they ever bring the puppet show back he could be the voice of the mean apple tree like from uh <laughs> <laughs> the wizard of oz <laughs> uh, you somebody pick something up here. <laughs> what are you doing here <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back after it's this a commercial. Two-hour movie for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the Hall of Justice. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the Hall of Justice. Do you know who did the voiceover for that? I do. Quincy, do you know who did the voice? Did that? Meanwhile, back at the Hall of Justice. Do you know what actor did that? No, I don't. You know him too. Ted Knight. Oh, Ted. think of it. You can hear his voice. On there, yep. When you, when you, because for years I didn't know who was, and then I then I saw him went on an interview, and he was like, I did the voiceover on the Super Friends. Do you remember who used to narrate Rocky and Bullwinkle? No, Cannon. Who was the guy that played Cannon? Frank, do you ever watch? Well, you're probably too young for Cannon. Who was the big fat detective? Oh, uh, he was on Jake and the Fat Man, yes. too. Um, Conrad, yeah, Robert, uh, Robert Conrad. Was it Robert Conrad? It? I'll, I'll, I'm thinking Robert Conrad was the guy with the battery on his shoulder. I say, like, hey, Siri, who played Cannon? <laughs> Here's Paco Bell's Cannon. William Conrad. William Conrad. Okay, that was it. He, if you listen to old Rocky and Bullwinkles, he's the narrator. He also narrated uh, one of the first Star Wars documentaries that came out in like the '78. Oh, that's interesting. He was, uh, you know, he was one of the shots was the one where Vader was trying to fighting Obi Wan, <laughs> and they kept hitting it like it, like it, fall, it over. fall over. And he goes, and you can hear him. William Connor goes, and the shot was not working. <laughs> I remember watching that. Right, and the shot was not working. I don't think I've seen it since the day that aired. You know what's really eerie if you can find it? It's not eerie, but as a kid watching it, it really scared the crap out of me. Was Orson Welles did a, or narrated a documentary and, and did wraparounds called The Man Who Saw Tomorrow. Oh, Nostradamus. Nostradamus. Yeah, that scared that the shit scared out of me. That scared the shit out yeah, of me. It really kid. did. And at the beginning when the eyes opened. Right. And he goes, and he go, two eagles will clash. A bear and yeah. eagle will clash. Yeah. Nostradamus is talking about in Quatrain yeah. 7. Yes. You know. And is it here that Nostradamus named the enemy, <laughs> but was off by one letter? And he named Hister. Hister, yeah, yeah, right. As soon as we talk Star Wars, he leans way back. <laughs> no, he's a Star Trek fan, I guess. But yeah, that, 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 the man who saw it tomorrow, which is available on, on yeah. YouTube. No, the other one that's on there was... There was a documentary that came out in like 1976 about finding Noah's Ark yes. on Mount Ararat. Yeah, in search of Noah's Ark, right. wasn't it? And yeah. it was hosted by some dude with a beard. Yeah. Um, that one was almost as good as The Man Who Saw yeah. Tomorrow. The same, the same people that made that are the ones that made that Bigfoot documentary I was talking about a few episodes ago. Okay. When you know, in search of Bigfoot or whatever. And right. Those were kind of interesting. You can all find these on YouTube. If you, yeah. you know, for you youngins out there that know, have no idea what we're talking about, Orson Welles, you know, before he sold wine, he was talking about Nostradamus. He sold no wine before it's time. Is, is Mrs. Johnson in there? I take orders from one person under protest. <laughs> Great Orson Welles meltdown. If you haven't heard it, go listen. The fish sticks, you never heard that? I have. Oh, the, the commercial. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, of course. When he was like, he's, you can hear him drinking the water and everything. <laughs> How many of you are in there, by the way? <laughs> and he goes, who are you anyway? <laughs> he forgot the camera was rolling. Yeah. <clears throat> Unbelievable. One more word out of you and you go. Quincy, speaking of going, we're going to wrap up the program. Go ahead, my friend. Well, first of all, we want to thank all of you for watching this very good episode. It just was like, good. Just like all our episodes are. Uh, please drive home carefully. Uh, have a real, real good Easter. Uh, and remember... We never close. Get well soon, Jeff. It's the new Get well soon. Come to the common bear, the new.